to you Come, come and gather around, family and friends. There's a number of chairs at the front, so I really encourage if you're standing and you want to sit, it looks really bad from up here that no one is on the front seats and they're all empty. It's very bad feng shui. And, uh, and the family are going to be down here, so come and join the family if you want to give them comfort and, and be by their side. So anyone standing up, find a chair first and you'll be a lot more comfortable. All right. Has anyone not got an order of service? Yes, well you better get you one too.
So if there's a seat, come and sit down because uh, we're, we're settling in just like the weather and uh, for however long this takes. So come and join us. I can't see you. You have to step forward. If I can't see your face, you have to step forward. There's someone in blue jeans there. Just come and step forward or come on that side. But I really would love everyone to come in close and be a part. There's a whole row of seats up the front. We're going to be here for a good hour, so sit down. <laughs> My little bossy bossness is coming out. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hello. I'm channeling Robin. Good. Yes. yes. <laughs> she would. Do it for Robin. Take a seat. Come on in. Everybody, we've catered for you. We have cover, we have chairs, we have cuddles. Has everyone checked in and QR coded? If you haven't, just do it afterwards, okay? Don't tell me. Good effort, everybody. Welcome. Welcome. Good effort getting here in crazy weather. And it still could come crazy, so we'll be prepared with our, our, our teams on, on the curtains. So welcome. You all look amazingly colourful. Quite a bit of bird life amongst you all and flowers. Let's gather in and settle in. If I do cough, don't be worried. I, uh, I just have a little asthmatic, damp lungs, COVID test done, tick, not. Um, just the weather. Welcome. We're going to begin um, very shortly. I'm just gonna do a little bit of housekeeping. If you have your mobile phone and you just need to have it on, just put it on silent or vibrate know that we're here for the duration if it rains we just all <laughs> come in a little bit closer and close the curtains It'd be very snug if you need to step out at any point you can and if you need to step out to go to the bathrooms they're in number 14 and there's little arrows and and towels on the floor and it's all good <laughs> and, and and also and know that, that at the completion of this, you are all welcomed to stay. Hopefully, Robin is organising the sun to shine and we all join our picnic rugs or chairs together and we crack open a whatever and enjoy ourselves and stay together. And I'd like to arrive you into ceremony with our starting song. And... Well, we should have brought some tissues, but we... Oh, there's a box there. Take a deep breath in and just allow your heart to feel what it needs to feel as it, as it kind of gets ready for what we're going to do together for this afternoon, which is, is take you on a little bit of a journey in remembrance, in honouring and in celebration. For all those times you stood by me For all the truth that you made me see For all the joy you brought to my life For all the wrong that you made right For every dream you made come true For all the love I found in you
Now that song was meant to crack you open a little bit and I'm sure there were words in that song that you could find that were singing directly to you and your Robin. Welcome, welcome family and friends of Robin Francis. My name's Sarah Tolmy. I'm a holistic celebrant and I work in this community at End of Life. I want to thank everyone for coming together today, for travelling from near and far. Thank you to those who can, can be here and even those who can't be here, they are here. They're joining us via the live stream, via the replay. Those that can't be there, here for us, we know your love is here. We know that your love and care is felt. Everybody, thank you for making your time on this crazy wild wet weather Friday to clear your diary and be here together to show your love and show your respect for Robin and her family. As we come into this time of ceremony now, I want you to just take this moment to, to arrive and clear the chatter from your mind and just be present here. Ground yourself, relax, take a deep breath in and even longer exhale out and calm your heart. A special thank you to all the neighbours of Queen's Cliff Place this amazing, wonderful, beautiful community for allowing us to gather at your street. I'm just going to turn that off down a little bit just so that it doesn't bounce. Is that a little bit better? Not so bouncy. What a great community. What a great street. Thank you for letting us take it over and park and in your driveways and anywhere we can. We are just outside Robin and John's lovely and welcoming home, which Robin made so beautiful, beautiful outside, beautiful inside, her, her lovely garden. Also, as we begin, let me acknowledge that we stand on Dark Injun country and I pay my respects to the traditional owners of these lands and to the elders past, present and emerging. As we settle in for ceremony, I also ask you if it's important to you to bring into this space whatever is your faith, your belief that you draw upon for your spiritual life. Whatever gives you comfort, whatever calms and soothes your heart and helps you process this. We're all here in, in unity, in celebration, in honouring, in love. I want to welcome Robin's family, acknowledge family here and family unable to be here. I acknowledge Robin's husband, John, daughter Kimberly with Abe and their two daughters, Ellie and Georgia. I acknowledge John and Robin's son, Rowan, in the Northern Territory and his children, Rena and Mitch, and also give recognition to Robin's sister, Judith, and her family. When our hearts are heavy with sadness and grief, we also actually feel the closeness of all of those we have loved and lost too soon. You know, grief is grief is grief. And I, so I send love to everybody here because everyone has grief in your tender hearts, if not here just for Robin today, but for everybody who you've loved and lost. So I acknowledge all of those in all our hearts who are dearly departed, family, friends, ancestors. And with that, I give particular honour and respect to Robin's dear mum and dad, Vivian and Alan. Today we have a heart heavy and yet essential task given to us. It is a sacred task. It is to acknowledge Robin's death, honour her life and give release and farewell to her spirit. 
and it's been such a shock. It may still feel very surreal for you all, an impossible real reality that a life lived with such busyness and positivity and purpose could come to such an abrupt and swift end is still hard, hard to believe, hard to accept. As you may know, Robin and John had left on a caravanning trip with good friends and an acute attack of pancreatitis saw Robin fall gravely unwell and rushed to hospital, but it was far too much for her body to fight. Small mercies included knowing Robin had expert med medical care and was not in pain. There was time for goodbyes and many, many I love yous were exchanged. She wasn't alone and we give thanks for that. This is not to understate the trauma and the shock and distress for John and Kimberly and the family and friends. Last week, we had a small private funeral for Robin. It was really important to John to bring Robin home one last time. And we did that. We had a very beautiful, gentle morning in her garden. The birds came, the sun came out after what felt like forever of rain. We popped some champagne and we shared some memories. For today, however, with the passage of a little bit more time, the intention now is to create a very welcoming and gentle meeting up, a new nighting of community and connections, bringing family, friends, neighbours, all who have loved and been loved by Robin, all together. So we can give each other comfort and we can give Robin proper farewell and proper honouring. Now you may not have all mingled together before, however you are united. You're united by your love and your care for Robin and her family and hers for you. And now you are tenderly united by loss. And so this is an essential gathering of community connected and united by love and by loss to honour, to celebrate to mourn together. Today's ceremony gives honour to Robin's unique life. Her family and some nominated friends are going to share the story of her life. And then I really hope that you might step forwards too and gift the family, gift everybody else in this community a story. A story maybe about your friendship with Robin, how she shared life and love with you. So yes, that does mean open mic. Some people like that, some people hate that. We'll find out soon enough. We'll seed that for you and maybe you can think of a story, but you've got to make it short and sweet and lovely, okay? After all, it's all of you who know and love her best. You are now the custodians of Robin's life and love story. You are now the keepers of the memories and the caretakers, oh thanks, of her ongoing legacy amongst this community. So today, we're going to remember Robin for who she was. Daughter, sister, wife, mum, nanny, neighbour, friend, and you can tell us more. We're going to remember Robin for how she was. Tidy, <laughs> organised. Oh my God, have you seen her caravanning preparation list? <laughs> Amazing. Friendly, caring, thoughtful, loving. And you tell me more. And we're going to remember Robin for the legacy she leaves, I mean, just take a second to just turn around and look at everybody here for a start. 
this is a tent full of love and community. That she created communities of family, work, friendship, travels, and all of you have an amazing story that we would love to hear. So before we take in the life arc and stories and memories, I want you now to just really tune in to the, the fullness of who Robin was for you. Take this moment to exhale, close your eyes, smile and think of her. Think of who your Robin is. Think of your relationship with her. Bring her into your heart and mind. Remember her smile and her voice and her laugh. Remember her warmth and her socialness. Think about her energy and interests, her home, her garden, her clubs. Remember her big loves, John, her family and her grandkids. Remember her zest for life and adventures and the travels she enjoyed. There's so many amazing photos up here on the wall. Make sure you, you have a look later. Remember how she loved you, like that song sang. Think of your most favourite happy memory of her and how at best she could make you feel. Just give yourself this moment and, and allow in this gentle, loving space to just let your heart burst a little bit more opened to Robin and bring her amongst us. And I'm going to let you really expand your heart into that memory. We've got another song, lots of really good songs. And this is a special, gentle, reflective one that just gives you your time, in case you don't want to go and come up to the mic, your time to just commune a little bit deeper with your Robin, the one that you know and love.
Music really does it, doesn't it? And I hope that just gentled you and allowed you to just feel a little bit deeper into who Robin was for you. And that's what our memories do. And that's what our stories do. Gone but not forgotten. We speak her name. We tell her story. We laugh at some memories. We cry at some memories. And that's now what we're going to do. And... The very first person I'd like to invite up to speak is her beautiful daughter, Kimberly. Send lots of love up front. She's got lots to say and she needs your strength and support. Feel free to cheer, laugh, <laughs> heckle if you must. Um, no heckling. <laughs> um, but uh, give her a lot of strength. An applaud too at the end. It's a big job. <laughs> there you go. Okay, I'm Seriously questioning the choice of song though. I'm crying know, crying I as I come that up to speak. You chose, she chose that. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to bring that down a bit for you. All right. It's all good. Now I'm going to um, just watch your tooth. So yep. you do need your mouth right on that. Okay. Okay. Can you stand with me, baby? Yeah, sorry. I have got a lot to say, but I had a lot to say, and so I hope it's okay. Um, I just want to say thank you all for coming again and to those watching from a distance um, and thank you for sharing this with us. Thank you for being a friend, for the flowers, for cards, for thoughts, actions. You know, people, it's just been an amazing outpouring of love and Dad and I are so grateful. Um, and I have to say a special heartfelt thank you to Peter, Dad's brother, and his wife, Christine, who... Uh, for coming straight to us when we needed them, all the way from Queensland, leaving their family. And especially Christine, who has just been my rock and shelter and co-driver over the last weeks. The best second mum anyone could ask for, and she has been this to many. Thanks also to Arnold and Sandra for being available and actively helping and guiding us through this time, and Vanessa for your help in the early days and all you've done to make today beautiful. Vanessa made all the signs and the beautiful birdhouse. So if everyone would like to write a memory or just name or whatever today and, and leave it there, we'll make a memory book out of it. And my Abe for everything. I'm forever grateful to you all. I know there's more people I need to thank, but let me get on with it. <laughs> um, Robin Diane Spencer, or Robin Francis, as we all knew her. Um, my mum was born in Sydney in 1947. The war was over, thankfully, and Dad her dad had survived and returned to his wife. Things in Australia were settling down. Mum was brought home to Five Dock, uh, now called Canada Bay, where she lived until marriage. Mum went to preschool at Sunnyside Prep, where she met Rosalie, one of our attendees today, and one of the owners of the beautiful Rolls Royce with the Robin number plates, done specially for today. They then went to primary school together at Haberfield Demonstration School, and the girls were originally in separate classes but later came together at Burwood Girls High School to finish their schooling together. They then moved on to TAFE together, though studying different things. And Rosalie recently shared a lovely memory of her first day at um, uh, Burwood Girls High School. And mum and another friend, Jennifer Taylor, who's watching online, um, were waiting at the gate for... Uh, for Rosalie uh, as she turned up to her new school on the day and she just remembered being so relieved that there was such lovely people there. So their, their friendship goes back a long, long way. And that was who mum was. She made friends and, you know, she, she treated them well generally. So 
had a lot of them. Um, Mum had a blessed upbringing with all the best life could offer at the time, despite many kids at the time being affected by polio and wearing calipers and what have you. And again, we're all thankful for vaccines. Um, boys and girls were segregated at their school at this time and divided by a physical barrier, a bit different to today's unisex uniforms and multi-gender toilet spaces. <laughs> um, my pa, mum's dad, Alan Spencer, was a wheeler and dealer and an excellent businessman. And the little family, after her sister Judith was born several years later, prospered and lived a good life. Photos of the Spencer family at this time are perfect. The girls all curls and pretty dresses, Viv's hair perfectly coiffed, as was the fashion of the time, and just a Spencer Francis thing, and beaming smiles from proud dad, Alan. Mum often fondly remembered a trip during her school years to Lone Pine, Queensland, with a school teacher who took a few girls as a personal girls' trip. Wouldn't be approved these days. She often spoke fondly of the teacher who took them and the German shepherd who met them on arrival with a koala on his back, if anyone's been there and remembers that. I recently found Mum an old postcard of the dog and the koala, which I know she loved. When Mum was around 12 or 13, a young man, Peter Francis, Dad's brother, and his young bride and baby, Anne, also here today and who's about to speak after me, um, moved in next door at Five Dog. Though they didn't know it at the time, this neighbour would irreversibly change Robin Spencer's life forever. Mum was fond of telling how Peter, seven years older than Dad, and his best mate somewhat, and somewhat father figure, encouraged John to ask out the good sort next door. <laughs> that was Mum. <laughs> when Dad finally did, though, and wait for it, he took the hint and asked Mum to join them for a water skiing trip at the little waterfront property they leased for this purpose on the Hawkesbury River. She was delighted and allowed to go unchaperoned. However, Mum was a little perturbed, to say the least, when Dad picked her up and she was asked to sit in the back and introduced to his girlfriend, who was in the front. <laughs> Needless to say, Dad's, <laughs> Dad's shaking his head going, what was I thinking? <laughs> Needless to say, Dad soon changed his interest to Mum and that is where the beautiful love story we have all been witness to began. Best friends, co-parents, partners in business and partners in everything, every day. Excuse me. As a young man, Dad became, began working with my pa, Alan, in the family butcher shop, Spencer's Quality Meats in Summer Hill. I remember his Austin's gearbox whine as he reversed up the drive before daylight each morning. Mum went to TAFE after school with aforementioned friends Rosalie and Jennifer, and she studied secretarial and administrative studies, well suited to her strengths of organisation, and she had a wonderful career to follow. Mum and Dad knew how to socialise and party in those early days too. They were seen in magazine and newspaper clippings, went out for lodge events and other higher society events. And Mum even did some modelling for a while with one of her employers. She was so very beautiful. Marriage was of course soon on the cards when Mum was 19 and Dad 20. Just before marrying and with the help of Dad's grandma, the infamous Mang, Mum and Dad purchased a rundown home in Croydon, complete with old car bodies and neck high weeds and grass in the backyard. Much work and love was put into the home by mum, dad and both sets of parents. Dad's father painted the whole home while they were on their honeymoon and it all came together. The home, which many of you will remember, was absolutely beautiful inside and out when they were done and they lived there for more, for 20 or more years. Their social life was busy and they were having too much fun in cars, on water skis and just generally in life, which meant my elder brother Rowan didn't come along until almost 10 years after their marriage followed three years later by me, and our family was complete. Mum and Dad poured love, attention and time into their children, their home and their friends and family, always frugal, smart with money, yet generous where it counted. My childhood memories include being taken to ballet and tap, going to Rowan's soccer, scout meetings, etc., being ferried to friends' places for playdates and so many holidays, family events and outings. They sure knew how to bring up happy kids. I remember one day when I was about eight, mum cleared the whole kitchen table, made two or three massive batches of Play-Doh so Rowan and I could build a Play-Doh world. I remember eight amazing themed birthday parties people would rave about at school afterwards. And mum and dad were so proud of anything we achieved, but of course, always with the keep striving attitude of, okay, what's next to conquer? I'll get a resounding agreement here. Put your hand up if you've ever heard it, but mum loved to brag about her kids and grandkids' achievements. <laughs> to anyone who would listen, and it is a great comfort to me and I'm sure all of us that she was proud of us. Mum and Dad worked hard, saved hard, 
and put my brother and I through private school and we enjoyed an amazing life on very minimal wages. Moving to the Central Coast was just one of Mum's life plans, meticulously planned, which came off amazingly. Nan and Pa had recently moved to Long Jetty. I'm trying to turn the page before I finished it, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, and Mum saw a chance for a sea change and worked towards the Gulf feverishly. She had some bad luck in find well, they had some bad luck in finding homes, being gazumped on a favourite at Womberall. But as Nan always said, one door closes and another one opens. And our Bado Bay home, when we found it shortly after, was just perfect. Dad, who moved on from butchery, recre recreated his Sydney home maintenance and painting business on the coast and went from strength to strength. While Mum again went to school admin positions, first at the entrance high where Rowan finished his schooling, then her beloved Terrigal High School where she worked in the library for over 20 years. Many of her colleagues and her old boss Dermot Keane are here today or watching online. She was loved at Terrigal High School for her event organising and sense of fun. Her dear friend Robin Morris had a lovely chat to me the other day about the spirit, passion, energy and fun Mum brought to the crew at Terrigal High. And she had some amazing friends for life from this group. When I worked in Terrigal restaurants, I recall Mum, and then a few of you here are going to yes, nod your heads at this, booking a night at the Haven restaurant with her Terrigal High School ladies. My friends owned the restaurant and I was to be waitress. Well, they were loud, they were fun and they laughed all night and then, yep, they danced on the tables. <laughs> I recall, she, Mum was probably about my age at the time, you know. I recall being fairly embarrassed at the time, but as a mum and now of a similar age, I know you're never too old to have silly fun, and now I hope I'm still doing the same when my kids are in high school and beyond. Sorry in advance, Ellie and Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> mum wasn't big on anyone being a victim or feeling sorry for themselves. Where did that get you? If you got upset, there was little pity. Just to come on, get on with it attitude. <laughs> An emotional person like me, a bit more take after dad, um, I often had issues with this and I just wanted someone to say it'll be okay and pat me on the back and just let me wallow. But, you know, it stopped me from over emotionalising things, which I have a tendency to otherwise do, and made me better at moving on and not being a victim or wallowing. Geez, I wish she was here now to say, wipe your tears and move on, darling. Mum always had a plan, lists, a mission to go on, and even when relaxing in later years especially, thank you baby, she was constantly shopping for gift ideas and ways to improve their lives, their home, and lives of those she loved. Mum was a fashionista, even in old daggy shorts with her hair not done, Mum had an elegance and a beauty. She matched jewellery expertly, loved bright colours, and wore them beautifully and often. And thank you everyone that heard the news to dress bright today. We just wanted it to be a celebration as well. Moving to this home in Marty across the road here when they downsized was one of the best decisions mum and dad ever made. They found an immediate, loving, thoughtful community with few very special members, including the girls who will soon speak, who we call mum's other daughters, who I now consider friends for life. Um, but most of all, mum loved and doted on her husband, the love of her life, always had a plan or idea for their next fun trip lunch, housework, home event or home improvement. They have not been leading a boring retirement. And her grandkids, Renna and Mitch and my brother, my brother Rowan's kids, so far away and unfortunately all unable to be with us today, but loved just every bit as much. And my kids, closer and fortunate to be with her regularly. All were smothered in love in whatever way was possible. They love nothing more than a call or FaceTime from their special kids. Especially, especially during the long months of COVID lockdowns. My girls spent a week or more every holidays at Nanny and Pa's when they were able, being fed, entertained and generally loved and adored. Renna and Mitch were here as often as possible to, to enjoy the love, just how it should be. They will all miss her very much. Mum had her fair share of medical issues in her life, brain surgery, gallbladder, heart issues, to name a few but she rarely whinged and was a strong, healthy woman in mind and body till the end. Camping in the wilderness with no Wi-Fi or facilities till the day she became ill. I will be forever grateful that she had this time with Dad and dear long-time friends Arnold and Sandra and their daughter Vanessa and her partner, and that we saw her several times after the dreadful months, dreadful months of COVID where we couldn't. But she would have absolutely been keen for us and life to move on and for all of us to enjoy, party, eat, drink, and be merry in her place. Oh, and some online shopping. 
Um, as long as the bed is made and the house is tidy first, everyone, please. And that is my new life goal, not making the beds, but for my family and dad to be able to move on, honour her memory and the strength she gave us. I hope you can all do that too. I love you, Mum. I will be talking to you whether you can hear me or not, and I'll keep trying to make you proud. Rest in peace. That's it. Thank you. Well done, Kimberly. You got through that, and it was an uh, absolute beautiful tribute to your mum. She'd be proud. Next, we're going to invite uh, Kimberly's cousin, Robin and John's niece, uh, Anne Francis, up. Come and join us, Anne. Give her a big round of applause. Yes. Lots of strength. Is that all right for you? Yes, for a short Francis. We're all pretty short. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, thanks, everybody. Um, Auntie Robin's been um, a very important and much-loved presence in my life since I was a baby. From the time of my birth um, until I was a toddler, my dad and my mother um, lived in a house, as, as Kim mentioned, next to the Spencer family. Um, Auntie Robin was a young teenager at the time, uh, and her and her younger sister Judith used to play with me and, and babysit me. In the meantime, um, Uncle John met Auntie Robin, and um, she soon became a regular attendee at the Francis family functions. Uncle John and Dad have always been very close, um, and wherever Dad was, Uncle John wasn't too far away, and so was Auntie Robin. While I did not have a mother from um, the time I was a toddler who was around, um, I was very fortunate to have some amazing, strong and loving women who more than filled the maternal gap in, in my life. One of them was my beloved grandmother, and the other was Auntie Robin. It's really hard to condense a lifetime of memory, sorry, um, in a few minutes. Thank you. So I will start with the following reflections um, about Auntie Robin and the impact on her life, on my life. Auntie Robin was an amazing hostess. I recall the fantastic parties that Uncle John and her used to throw. Uncle John would sort the music, the drinks and the dancing, um, and Auntie Robin would prepare and lay out the most amazing party food. Just a little bit close to Sorry. Mouth. Sorry. Okay. Like <laughs> That's okay. Um, I learned a lot from her about the art of making people feel welcome in your home and about how to give them a bloody good feed as well. Her ability to keep an immaculate um, home that was extremely comfortable at the same time and have the tiniest details attended to is legendary. Annie Robin had an amazing knack of finding special birthday gifts that were just right. And I could always tell the time and trouble that she put into finding each and every one of them. She never forgot a birthday. Auntie Robin held strong opinions about things and she was not backwards in coming forward and sharing them with those of us who knew her. However, she had very high standards and these were very important to her. And I know there's been times in my life where my actions and behaviours have disappointed her. But we always managed to get through those times and come through it. This leads me to my next point. Those, whoever Auntie Robin loved, she loved fiercely. I will be forever grateful to be one of the people that Auntie Robin loved. In finishing, Auntie Robin was a true force of nature and she helped shape the person I am today. I'll be forever grateful and treasure the time that I had with her um, and the memories and the love that she's left me. Thank you. Thanks, Anne. As uh, Kimberly mentioned before, she now has these lifelong friends who are the other daughters. And I would love to invite the other daughters up, Tegan, Shannon and Deborah. in advance if my voice is very big on the microphone, no, so I might like, stand um, back. No, no, I like big voices. We need big voices, and you might have to really step forward still. Okay. It's, it's powerful, but not that powerful. We wanted to start by saying thank you 
for all coming today to remember Robin in a place that was so special to her and to all of us. For those of you who don't know us, we are Shannon, Tegan and Deborah, and we live right here in Queenscliff Place. To us, Robin was our Marty mum, and to her, we were her girls. We shared so many laughs and good times right here, and we're here to support each other for the not so good times too. We are so privileged to have you all here today, to come, to come together to share a few stories and a glass of bubbles, to remember Robin in all her fabulousness. I've not done this before. <laughs> uh, we thought in Robin's spirit of fun and as a testament to the good times that we have shared, a poem would be a fitting way to capture the essence of Robin. <laughs> Robin, you were the queen of our Queenscliff crew. The first one to call out when it was time for a cold brew. <laughs> or if Jeff was needed. <laughs> Friday afternoons were the time and the place and everyone came with a smile on their face. That one time, you and John even raced. <laughs> a neighbour and close friend, Robin, you were a gem. The daily chats and the laughs you even enjoyed just watching our kids play in the park. You have left a hole in... <laughs> I've got this. You have left a hole in so many people's hearts and now we are not sure what to do. So we just cherish all of the special memories we got to share with you. We loved you for your impeccable passion for pearls, tablecloths, gin, John and fashion. But underneath your style and grace were the things that you loved that put a smile on your face. Your love for your family, your friends and your van. And sitting on the love seat with John, your main man. We will miss listening to your stories for hours about the Aston Club, your special white bikini, <laughs> your travels and your love of birds and bright flowers. You taught us about love, family and life how to be a strong woman, how to be a good wife. <laughs> you iron the underwear, you squeegee the shower, you toothbrush the grout and wipe the sink every hour. <laughs> but you welcoming our mess and us coming together came above the sparkling floors to create memories. <laughs> we will cherish forever. Okay. Champagne by Grant Berg was your drink of choice. If the kids damaged the plants, we'd soon hear your voice. <laughs> <laughs> you could easily drink us all under the table. <laughs> Except that one time, Shani's margaritas made you unstable. <laughs> but you had a quick nap, then you were back and finished your drink just like that. <laughs> Robin, because of you, our friendship grew as we welcomed Kimberly, Abe, Ellie and Georgie to our crew. They are a testament to you and John as a pair. Every day it is evident of the inspiring love that you share. Robin, we will never forget your beautiful, wise and happy face. You will be forever missed from Queenscliff Place. Oh, bless you three. That was just the the beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that, Kimberly. Don't say that. Perfect. Perfect. We'll have to get that sent out to everybody, that yes, poem. Yes. Next. Dear friend, Arnold, Arnold Knight. Come forwards, Arnold.
Thank you. How do you outdo that? <laughs> On the 17th of November, all our worlds changed with the passing of Robin Diane Francis. We, we were friends for nearly 60 years and you would think in that time I would have known that she had a middle name. But, <laughs> but until a week ago, I didn't know that Robert had a, Diane as a middle name. So you can never take anything for granted, can you? Um, Robin, everybody has commented on how fastidious she was with in the house and the children and all that. We were married um, a month apart and our lives were intertwined for such a long time. She's a person that will be indelibly um, marked in my family's minds because my family and John's family, um, there's very little to separate us. We had a wonderful weekend, the uh, up at Frying Pan Creek, until that Monday afternoon, and none of us can still handle the fact that it turns so rapidly to a disaster that um, it'll take us all a long while to get it over it. Um, John, Robin, Sandra and I did a lot of touring together in the vans and then uh, went to New Zealand and Broken Hill and the Great Ocean Road and all those sort of places. Um, and we just enjoyed each other's company. And it is something we didn't have to say or keep reminding ourselves how close we were. It was just one of those things that was accepted. Um, I am still finding it hard to deal with the situation as is my wife, Sandra. But, you know, we make this promise. Sure. John. We will be there for you. Your family. Thank you. Nice one, Arnold. Be there for you forever. Families intertwined. Breaks your heart, but also just makes your heart, doesn't it? Really profound and powerful stuff. We're moving through all the feelings today. Next on our program was going to be Ian Blythe. Um, he's just come up to me and asked me if I'd invite a mate before him to speak, Dennis Brady from the um, Central Coast British Car Club and then Ian's going to follow after him. Is that okay, Dennis? Excellent. Come and join us. I had you to throw to first in my open mic, like this is how it's done, but uh, so someone else has to take his, his place. Uh, John, Kimberly. Kimberly. 
I'll have to read this. There's no way I can remember it. We all come here with our many fond recollections of Robin and clearly Robin and John collected friends very easily over years and kept them for years. My memory started in 93. 28 years ago was a good year. Sydney won the bid to host the 2000 Olympic Games. Warney bowled the ball of the century to take out Mike Gatting. We won the first test and went on to win the series. Hopefully that'll happen this time around too. And then Anne and I met Robin and John. Many years and many memories since then. We met because of an MGB. Anne and I were looking for a family-oriented club here on the coast. And as luck would have it, we went to a card club display at uh, Edzac. I was admiring a jag and I met a couple of excitable characters singing the praises of their club, Central Coast British Car Club. One was John, and I found out later he was president. They spoke a the good story of the club that was laid back, inclusive and intent on having fun. So I went to a meeting in the old youth club in Gosford, and that's where I met Robin. She recognised me as a newbie, introduced herself, showed me around, and introduced me to others. The friendly welcome I had was not just limited to me, of course. That is how Robin received everyone. It's how she was. It turned out that Robin was the editor for the club, a challenge she undertook for many years. This is an early publication. In those days, the tools she had were limited. Typewriters, white ink and primitive copying machines. And uh, sometimes you could even... You might even see someone that you recognise in a photo that looked like that. <laughs> Our technology's moved on. Her page was always on, uh, what's page seven, I think. Mm -hmm. That was the cartoon of Robin. <laughs> uh, always appeared at the top of the page. <laughs> and uh, she was described as editor, bracket, in chief, full, <laughs> full stop, etc. <laughs> like any other editor, Robin always encouraged contributions to help fill the white space the dread of any editor. There was one unbreakable rule, wasn't there, John? No recipes. <laughs> I've often wondered why, because I'm sure there's some good, good meals out there. Robin was an amazing multitasker in managing family, work and club commitments over many years. Despite the editorial workload and for years after, Robin participated fully in all aspects of club activities. She organised runs, coming up with diabolical questions used to determine the run winners, Christmas events, dress-up nights and so on. It was always the full Monty. Robin was aided and abetted in all this fun and nonsense by John. They were a great double and thank you. Robin and John's huge contribution to the club over many years resulted in both of them being granted life membership. One of my fondest recollections is that of her self-imposed role. I remember I said that editor-in-chief and etc. cetera. The self-imposed role she had was that of hostess, and that's already been mentioned here earlier in other speakers. Robin was the ultimate. An elegant lady, the bubbly, caring and generous personality that made her easy to like. She was one of those people to whom strangers were simply friends that she had yet to meet. She was always successful in turning once were strangers into friends. Many of them close friends, and those friendships lasting for years, as you've heard today. The Central Coast British Car Club still enjoys a welcoming and inclusive culture that has not been accidental. It exists due to the personalities of two people who guided the club for over 30 years and made it so, Robin and John. Yes, it's a car club, British if you please but a club in which people are more important than cars. That was always stressed by John and Robin. Anne and I are proud to be a part of that. <sighs> Family of friends, thanks for the memories. You won't be forgotten.
And to follow directly on from Dennis, please welcome Ian. Oh, sure, I'll forget, yeah. <laughs> Some of this is going to sound a little repetitive because I'm also a member of the car club and proud to bring some cars along here today. The CCB CC was a very, very important part. Then I can't see. Anyway, some 20 years ago, my wife Val and I escaped from Sydney, probably like many of you. We had just returned from an extended tour circumnavigating the country and living in a little tin box, five metres by two and a half. We were homeless. We'd sold everything in Sydney, business, house, everything. Our goods and chattels were all stored in Gosford, so it was kind of obvious that we should settle down on the coast. The trouble was we knew nobody and nothing. But we did have one particular possession that was to prove to be very important. We had owned an elderly British classic car for about 10 years. And by pure chance, we spotted an item in the local paper about a group of British car nutcases, oh, sorry, enthusiasts, <laughs> who had just returned from a tour of Tasmania. We called the contact number, actually ended up talking to John's mum, no, Robin's mum, and were promptly invited to a display day at the entrance. This was Easter, approximately 2001. This was our first contact with the Central Coast British Car Club. We were very quickly adopted by both John and Robin, and seemed to be considered suitable candidates for membership. We even survived some initiation ceremonies. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you what they were. <laughs> John was the president, but we could work out pretty quickly that the real power behind the throne yeah. was Robin. <laughs> Her bubbly, enthusiastic personality shone through and made us realize that this was no ordinary car club, many of which we had experienced over the years. The CCBCC proved to be a very social club. A British car was the passport to get in, but that was all. This social aspect was exemplified by both Robin and John, and all family members were encouraged to join in all the activities. In no time at all, we knew many friends on the coast, we visited every park and every picnic spot, and came to know all the best eateries around. As is often the case, many subgroups formed within the club umbrella. We were one of seven couples, which seemed to congregate frequently over a meal at one home or the other, for a picnic or some other excuse. This group included Robin and John and many others who are here today. With 14 birthdays between us, it wasn't difficult to find a reason <laughs> for a get together. <laughs> Many years ago, at a memorable dinner at Robin and John's previous home, Robin laid on one of her splendid meals for the 14 of us. And it was here that we evolved into the Magnificent Seven. <laughs> Thanks to some elaborate place cards prepared by Robin. And so we remained the Magnificent Seven ever since. Probably about eight or nine years, maybe a turn more. Thanks in, most, and th bleh, thanks in no small part to Robin's vivacious attitude and willingness to allow a noisy rabble to descend frequently on her quiet and organized home <laughs> for coffee and cake after one of her many meals or picnics. I'm, I'm much more comfortable writing words than I am speaking them. So I do find it challenging to paint an appropriate word picture of Robin's outlook on life, whereby she always wanted to live every day to the utmost. 
So, if you'll bear with me, I'll cheat just a little and quote a favorite poem, translated from an old Sanskrit one. It's called Thought for Today. Look to this day, for it is life, the very life of life. In its brief course lie all the realities and truths of existence, the joy of growth, the splendor of beauty, the glory of action. For yesterday is but a memory, and tomorrow is only a vision. But today, well lived, makes every yesterday a memory of happiness, and every tomorrow a vision of hope. Look well, therefore, to this day. And so, Robin, this might be farewell from the Magnificent Seven, but you'll always be with us. Wow, such a, a, a rich kind of romp through the stories and the memories, but I still think we have appetite for more. And uh, certainly I would love to give anybody here a chance to come up and share a memory, a story, a word, say something before we move on. Is there anyone who would like to... To come up, it's a yeah. We got a hand. We got. I could reverse auction this, but we've just got a, a brave soul. What is your name? Barry. Barry. Please welcome Barry. I had to come up because, like a lot of people here, I was a member of the famous car club and still am. In fact, I think we've got all the past presidents here today to, know, to share this. But it was such an unusual club that it's pretty hard to convey just how good it really was and the comradeship that was shared. And that, as you heard, was by no means a small part due to John and Robin. And they were such a dynamic duo driving the club that it was so successful and it still is today and it's still a memory to both of them for years to come, I hope. So I just wanted to say what a privilege it was and is to belong to the club, to have known Robin and she was a, a, a person of deep love and, and personality. We, um, we always saw Robin as being the lieutenant to John. Um, but I can tell you, we shared a week on a boat in the Whit Sundays, and I've actually got the proof of who was, I'm sorry, I'm shaking, who was the captain. <laughs> so, Robin, rest in peace. Thank you. Nice one, Barry. Is there anyone else who'd like to come up and share what's on your heart? Tell us a story. Yeah, 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 yeah. Someone's dobbing you in, actually. You're getting pointed at from behind you. What's your name, sir? John Hammond. John Hammond. Thank you. My wife Christine and I first met John and Robin when Kimberly and our daughter Kelly started school together at Croyd. The Kimbo and Keko show. <laughs> they entertained, the two girls entertained us and that's what we call them. Instead of Kimberly and Kelly, it was Kimbo and Keko. John and Robin became a big part of our lives. We spent a lot of social time together with the Aston Martin Car Club. Uh, caravanning up on the central coast, uh, all sorts of activities like that with our families. And I remember John built a little canoe 
called it Little Spill. He spilled some paint on it and that was the name of the boat, Little Spill. And that ended up in my family. Remember that? Yeah. A lot of other good memories with John and Robin. We're always welcome in their home and regular Saturday nights we'd all get in that little car of yours and I can't remember what it was now but we'd all pile in and it was a prairie, that's right. And, and little Brad used to get under the back seat because <laughs> we were one seat short. <laughs> and we go to that Chinese place over at Lane Cove. Can you remember the name of that? Which one of my uncles had something to do with it? Oh, right. Anyway. <laughs> but one of the most important social functions we had was one particular Saturday night. We are all going out for dinner together and it was my turn to drive so we'd go around and pick up the Francis's. When I got there, he said, I want to show you something in my garage. I said, we're going out for dinner, isn't it? <laughs> Go out in the garage, open up the back doors, surprise party for my 40th. <laughs> and did Robin put on a show? I must also comment, John, with the garage, he had his drop sheets all around, covering up all his tools and everything else, with beautiful paintings on them. And I still have that painting that John did. Uh, it was a painting with my first big ski boat in the background. Yeah, I remember that and I've still got it hanging up at home. John and Robin, we love you, we always have. And the family, we'll miss you, Robin. Thank you. What a picture is getting painted, right? So many social occasions, so much love and joy. What a powerhouse of connecting people and friendship Robin has been for all of you. Is there one last person at all who would like to pop their hand? Okay, you'll give it a go. No, it's not because we've got people on the live stream so we need you to talk into the microphone. I'm sorry. I could pay, Actually, I could take the microphone to you. If you'd like. Would you like to stay there? I'll bring the mic to you. No? Okay. Come in. Come in. I'm going to pop back. back. Oh, the owner of the rolls, everybody, <laughs> with the Robin number plates on. What's your name, sir? Les Johnson. Les Johnson. <clears throat> okay. Here we go. Um, <clears throat> social events with um, John and Robin. I probably introduced Aston Martins to um, John and Robin, and so... Um, and my wife went to school with Robin, so it goes back a fair way. But um, as you know, Robin liked to have everything so-so. But um, we had a party at Croydon once, and uh, I used to liven it up a little bit. And um, <laughs> they, they, had two to they had two toilets. And one outside had a, a space with a little bit of room underneath the door like that. Um, John had left two work boots out, so I placed them near the, uh, the toilet. <laughs> and reached over and locked the door. Um, people were complaining. They wanted to go to the toilet. They couldn't go to the toilet. <laughs> and um, I think Robin ended up saying to John, you better go and check who's... Someone's got a serious problem in the toilet. <laughs> anyway, John bent down, looked underneath, and there was just a pair of boots there. So <laughs> I, I don't think Robin was very happy with me that night. But, uh, but I, I remember the good times at Croydon. It was a nice house and um, we had a lot of good parties there and things. And, and I don't know, it's just one of those uh, memories that goes on. I had a lot of good times with John. I've even slept with him, you know, like... <laughs> <coughs> John usually sleeps with Robin, but I slept with him one night, so... Um, on, a, on a car run, so... Um, uh, we, we just had, my wife and myself had very great memories with um, John and Robin as a, as a couple and we always had fun. It was never a uh, problem. I mean, it was only a few, it seemed like a few weeks ago John and Robin were at our, our place and uh, um, out of anyone's passing, I can't ever think of anything that's affected my wife so much as um, Robin passing. Um, and it's probably associated with the long, the long time just being together. But um, it, it is a sad thing. But 
I don't know. It's, there's no answer to any of it. So that's it. I'm going to nick off now before I get upset. <laughs> but um, thanks, thanks for all the good times, Robin and John. Thanks, Les. Are we going to keep the number plate, Robin, on the car? Does it stay? Hmm? Yeah, I think we make it stay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so it is, you know, we, we, we begin talking about Robin and honouring Robin and it can't not become a, a couplet, John and Robin. Yeah, like a, a single unit and uh, there's not an answer to that and we just send you lots and lots of big love and everyone I think will be here for you and these guys forever. We will move on now because at some point there's a street party and a street festival to be had. And uh, before we do, I'd like to finish with some closing uh, words of tribute. I need my <coughs> glasses for this one. Uh, I've been asked to read this poem on behalf of uh, Rowan and Kimberly. It's the one in our booklet called Mum. If I could have only one more day, only one more, I'd pick up the phone and tell you I love you. I would thank you for loving me unconditionally and I would thank you for helping me to be me. If I could only have one more day, I pray heaven is everything you dreamt it to be. I pray you're safe and free from pain and have met up with your loved ones. And I pray you have heard every word I have said. To my darling mum, I will love you forever, so be safe until we meet again. A sudden and unexpected death, as with Robin. It doesn't give any of us any chance to say goodbye, to prepare. I mean, how do you prepare? I hope today in the moving through of some big emotions and feels and just being together and then just immersing in the amazing stories, memories, love, that is and has been created by Robin has given you a, a chance to move out of that shock and begin to integrate the continuum that is life and death and life moving on. And know that beyond death, your life goes on and your love and your relationship with Robin it continues. It's true, hard to believe that Robin has died and you won't see her again. And there is real sadness to feel around that, to always feel around that. Ongoing sadness and grief. Indeed, she will be greatly missed by everybody here. And if I've listened well and felt into the essence of your Robin, allow me to say again for all of you, what a great life and love she's created and enjoyed. And she was surrounded by love. And she was blessed with a great love with John. Robin loved her life. She was in a great place. She was doing all the things she loved. She and John had great friends and a network of connections and community, strong community here on the coast. And she was loved and supported by her family, loved her time with her grandchildren. She was happy and exactly where she wanted to be. Allow your heart to be happy about that, to be thankful 
to be inspired. I feel inspired by Robin and in the, in the life she led and the love she created. All was good in her world and she would want all to be good and right in your world too. Robin wasn't religious. Where, would, where does Robin find herself now? Perhaps living beyond the now, into the mystery, out into the beyond, what we can know and be sure about. Perhaps you have a particular place in mind or not. Maybe she is up there. That kind of religious. I know, she's been talking to, to God about the weather. They've had a bit of a disagreement, but now they're, they're on board. They've sorted it out. She had faith and... Maybe she's up there with Vivian and Alan, her parents. We had a good giggle last Wednesday, imagining Robin sorting out heaven, <laughs> giving it a good declutter and a tidy up and a zhuzh. <laughs> Whatever is your concept of what may be beyond death, wherever Robin is, there's one place that we can be sure she is and always is, and that is in your hearts. You can feel that, can't you? She's there. She's in your today. She's in your memories. And she's in your tomorrow too, in all your stories and all the love that you carry with you. She does live with you forever, onwards into your lives. You can't forget a life force such as Robin. As we complete our time in ceremony now today, allow me to finish with some words of comfort, words of thanksgiving. And after these words are complete, I'm going to play another song to bring us out of ceremony. And then, of course, you are invited to stay, to stay for the street party. The sun has come out. I'm sure there's loads of food and wine and whatever coming join your picnic rugs gather your chairs into circles break out of your normal circles and meet someone you don't know say hi share a story that's the best gift you've all got as we can see the stories and their memories they heal our heart they are a honey balm to our heart today but allow me to say these words, which I said on Wednesday when we gave her tender farewell. This is a prayer I wrote of praise and thanksgiving for Robin and hopefully to offer you all some comfort. Dearest and beloved Robin, we give thanks and praise to you. Thank you for being exactly who you were. Thank you for your essential presence in our lives. You've gifted us your love and devotion. Thank you for being such a wonderful wife, dedicated mum and the bestest nanny. We'll remember your positivity and passion, your generosity and care, your humour and your heart. We'll honour your beautiful home, wardrobe, shoes, bags, colour, style. Dear Robin, thank you for your goodness and your love. We honour and acknowledge you for all that you were to each of us and carry that knowing, carry the quality of you, the memory and feeling with us in our hearts so you continue to live as we live. And Spirit, shower upon your love upon this community, upon all who loved and were loved by Robin, and particularly for John, Kimberly and Abe, Rowan, Ellie and Georgia, Mitch and Renna. Hold us all in a safe, gentle and loving embrace through our grief and sorrow. <coughs> Allow this family to hold strong, allow them to stay connected 
to their joy and their happiness. Lighten our hearts and souls to accept Robin's death with grace and peace. And keep your hearts open to the deep love that you can all experience together. And as you continue to hold Robin in your hearts, and we commit Robin back to the earth, into the mystery, into the eternity of life, we give thanks she blessed our lives. We release and we farewell Robin, and we pray be in peace, Robin. And we ask for peace and love and grace to be in the hearts of all who love you. And we will see and hear and feel and know Robin's presence is with us every day. We thank you, Robin. I'm going to play this song to bring you out of ceremony. Feel free when you want to, to, to get up, stretch your legs, hug each other and go out into the sun. This first song that we play is a special song. It's the song that Robin and John heard and enjoyed on their first date, I think, when they went to a, a Cliff Richard concert. And then another song which is a favourite, which is Putting on the Ritz. So th we're going to play this music. It's your invitation now to stretch your legs, join again with each other and settle in for festivities in honour of Robin. For a week or two Fun and laughter on a summer holiday No more worries for me or you For a week or two We're going where the sun shines brightly We're going where the sea is blue We've seen it in the movies Now let's see if it's true Everybody has a summer holiday Doing things they always wanted to So we're going on a summer holiday To make our dreams come true For me and you The sun shines brightly We're going where the sea is blue We've seen it in the movies Now let's see if it's true Everybody has a summer holiday Doing things they always wanted to So we're going on a summer holiday To make our dreams come true me and you Noses in the air, high 
high hats and arrow collars, white spats and lots of dollars, spending every dime for a wonderful time. If you're blue and you don't know where to go to, why don't you go where fashion sits? Putting on the ritz. Different types who wear a day coat, pants with stripes and cut away coat, perfect fits. Putting on the ritz. Dress up like a million dollar trooper. Trying hard to look like Gary Cooper. Come, let's mix where Rockefellers walk with sticks or umbrellas in the mitts. Putting on the ritz. Stop like a 